My name is John Jarko. I'm a cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston and a deputy editor at the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm speaking from the floor of the 2019 American College of Cardiology Scientific Sessions in New Orleans. I'm delighted to be able to share with you some of the exciting research that we are publishing in the New England Journal online to coincide with some of the presentations here at the meeting. I'd like to begin by talking about two very long-awaited clinical trials that were presented in the joint ACC-NEJM late-breaking clinical trial session. These were two randomized trials of transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR, compared to surgical aortic valve replacement in patients at low risk. TAVR was originally developed as a way to treat severe aortic stenosis in patients who could not undergo surgical aortic valve replacement because they had high or prohibitive surgical risk. TAVR was subsequently shown to be superior to or non-inferior to surgical aortic valve replacement in patients first at high risk and subsequently at intermediate risk of surgical complications. However, most patients with severe aortic stenosis are at low surgical risk, and therefore these two trials were designed to, fi to fill an important evidence gap by evaluating patients who had not been studied in previous trials. In one trial, the PARTNER-3 trial, the SAPIEN-3 transcatheter aortic valve was compared to surgical aortic valve replacement. In that trial, the primary endpoint was a composite of death, stroke, or hospitalization at one year, and TAVR was superior to surgery for this endpoint. In the other trial, three different transcatheter aortic valves were studied, the core valve, the Evolute R, and the Evolute Pro. Again, the comparison group was surgical aortic valve replacement. In this trial, the primary endpoint was a composite of death or disabling stroke at two years, and TAVR was non-inferior to surgery in this trial. These two trials taken together strongly suggest that TAVR may actually be the preferred treatment for severe aortic stenosis, even in patients at low surgical risk. Another interesting trial that was presented in a late-breaking session here is called RAPIT. RAPIT spelled W-R-A-P hyphen I-T. RAPIT evaluated a novel approach to preventing infection in patients undergoing implantation of a cardiac pacemaker or defibrillator who were deemed to be at increased risk of such an infection. The experimental group in this trial received a novel envelope made of a woven absorbable material and impregnated with antibiotics. The pacemaker or defibrillator was inserted into the envelope and the envelope was then implanted in the patient. The antibiotics with which the envelope were impregnated were minocycline and rifampin and these two antibiotics gradually eluded from the envelope into the surrounding tissue over the course of several days. In the control group, a standard implantation of pacemaker or defibrillator was performed without the envelope. The primary endpoint in this trial was infection, serious enough to require extraction or revision of the device or requiring prolonged antibiotic therapy with infection recurrence or leading to death at one year. The patients who received the antibiotic impregnated envelope had a significantly lower rate of such serious infections than the control group. The last trial that I'd like to mention is the COACT trial. This was a trial that studied patients who had been resuscitated from out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and were comatose but stable 
upon presentation to the emergency room. Many patients who suffer cardiac arrest have coronary artery disease, and for some of those patients, the coronary disease may be responsible for the cardiac arrest. But when a patient presents to the emergency department after resuscitation, it isn't always clear whether the coronary disease is the cause or not. In patients who have an electrocardiogram showing ST segment elevation at the time of emergency room presentation, it is generally agreed that immediate cardiac catheterization should be performed. But what about those who do not? So in the COACT trial, patients who had been resuscitated from cardiac arrest and were presenting to an emergency room comatose, but without ST segment elevation on their electrocardiogram, the patients were randomized to either immediate coronary angiography or to delayed coronary angiography, which was typically performed after neurological recovery. The primary endpoint in this trial was survival to 90 days, and there was no significant difference between the two groups in this endpoint or in the endpoint of survival with good neurological status. So this trial is important because it demonstrates that if a patient suffers out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and is resuscitated and presents to an emergency room without ST segment elevation, em emergent coronary angiography is not necessary and the procedure can be deferred until neurological recovery. These are just some of the trials that the New England Journal of Medicine has published online to coincide with presentations here at the meetings of the American College of Cardiology. If you'd like to read about all of these trials, you can go to the American College of Cardiology page at the New England Journal of Medicine website at www.nejm.org forward slash ACC. Thank you very much.